Okay, sorry, I'm back now. Sorry for the disruptions. We we have a network glitch. So I believe everybody can hear me now. All right. Okay, so please confirm Facebook people can are they still with me? Can they hear me now? Or are they still connected? I need that feedback. Okay, they will be back. All right. So let me go back to my screen. Sorry for that. This is Nigeria. <laughs> okay, they are coming back. All right. So I just finished explaining. I was talking about the basic parts of a website. So mm -hmm. that was what I was talking about. Right. Yes, sir. So now. So the basic parts of a website, we are starting with the header and the menu. And I've explained to us that this is the uppermost part of a website. This is the first thing visitors will see when they enter a website. So it contains the brand logo and the website menu. Let me just show us a sample of that. So this is how a website header and menu area looks like. So you have your site logo most times to your left hand side. Then you have your navigation menu, probably at the center or to the right. Then you have a call to action button if you want one by your right hand side at the other end. So that's what we call your header and your menu. And that is the first thing people will get to see or get to interact with on your website. Now, the function of the navigation menu is basically to help your user experience so that when people access your website, they will know when to access other pages. So it helps to guide your, your viewers or your visitors for them to be able to know how to access other pages on your website. So that's the function of your navigation menu. Do you get it? So we have the header and the menu aspect. Let's proceed. Then the next thing you have is your featured visual or commonly called your hero. And it can be an image or a video. And this comes up immediately below the header. So I took time to explain this also last time. So it can be an image, it can be a video. This is an example of what we call a, a featured visual or your hero. So you can see every child deserves basic education. That's just the H1, the heading. Then you have the call to action button and an image by the side. So that's big banner that big image or video or slideshow that people get to see when they access your website is what we call your featured visual or your hero. Do we get it? Okay. So let me show us a live example of that on After School Academy websites. I believe you have seen that also when you visit our website. So when you get after school, this, this was the page that was loaded that time. That's the 404 page. So you can see, oops, I think you get lost between the ships. The page you are looking for couldn't be found back to one page. So that's how a 404 page looks like. All right, let me go back to our own page. So this is the home page. You can see the header and the menu. The next after it is your featured visual or your hero. So you can see the girl skills become relevant. You have your H1. Most times, most times the Adding the most important uh, test on your website, H1, is always found on your featured visual. It's always on the euro. So uh, in our next class, I will, I will teach us a little bit of HTML and we take a little bit of HTML and CSS so that you can understand when I say H1, when I mentioned H2, when I mentioned P tag, when I mentioned anchor tag, 
So those are web terminologies, website terminologies that you need to know. So I will use that HTML class to, obviously this is not a programming class, but you still have to know a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS for you to be able to speak professionally in the web design industry, you get it. So are we, you don't like coding, don't worry. It's not real coding, just a simple coding, just to give you an understanding of what H1 is about. When we talk about H1, H2, H3, when we talk about styling, what do we mean? So we need to have that knowledge. So that's why we are going to take just a one day lesson on HTML and CSS, just a crash course on HTML and CSS. All right, so you have your H1 on this featured visual. You have your paragraph, then you have your button, and you have your images for to communicate more about your site. All right, so that's the second part of the website. We've seen the first part, the heading. We've seen the second part, the featured visual. All right, let's move on. So the next part we want to look at is your website content. So after the heading, the featured visual, then the next thing is your website content. So content are the words written on your site that explain what your website is about. So what you have to offer, how your site visitors can take advantage of your offerings, all these things mix up your website content. Now, content covers a wide array of things. It can be the paragraphs that explain your site mission. It can be the product. It can be the CTA test. That is the call to action test. It can be your testimonials. It can be the events. It can be anything. What makes up your communication medium on your website is what we call your content. Okay, sorry for that, please. Sorry, please. The network uh, did some Nigerian things for me there. <laughs> God bless Nigeria. All right, let's proceed. Sorry about that. So I was trying to explain the website content. So you have to command this network now to stop being a Nigerian. Okay, so let's see an example of a website content. For me, need to set up something here. All right. Okay. Enjoying the teachers. God bless you. Thank you. I'm enjoying your presence also. Glad to have you here. All right. So. Let's see the basic part of a website in, re in regards to your website content. So the next aspect now is to get people to know more about what you offer on your website. So this is a, an NGO type of website. Right from the featured visual, you will have seen that. Okay, let me go back to the hero. That's the featured visual. So right from the hero, you can see this is basically a non-governmental organization website. So Every child deserves basic education. So you can see that the, the website is about providing, raising money or donation to be able to send kids to school from age five to 15 years. So, and the call to action is to join us. That is, when you click on that join us button, it will direct you to where people can make donation. So this is the content of the website. You can become a volunteer for that NGO. You can donate to support. You can become a partner. So these are just the content that makes the website to be able to pass their message. Okay. Then this is another aspect of the website content. So our work promise to uphold the trust placed on us. So you can see 20,000 volunteers, 500 plus sponsors, 100 plus awards. All these things are just to increase the, the trust and the value of that particular organization and you are communicating that through your website. So that is the website content. Now I've mentioned three parts of your website. The first one is your header. 
and the menu that is the navigation menu. The second one is your featured visual that consists of your H1, that's the heading. It consists a paragraph that talks more about the heading, a call to action brought in that talks more about the most important action you want your people to take or the visitors to take, and probably an image or a slideshow as the background or a video on the background. Okay, the next thing is we'll talk about the website content. Beautiful. Let's go to the last one, which is the footer. So the footer is the lowest part of a website, just as your header is the, the, the uppermost part of a website. So also the footer is the lowest part. That's the bottom part. It usually contains a site map with links to available pages on your website. So what we call site map is just different areas that are available on your website. So it contains links to different pages that people can access through your website. So this helps visitors find all of your offerings that cannot be found on the header. Your header navigation menu cannot contain everything. So you want to put most of these things on your footer. For instance, you can put your times and condition at the header, sp uh, header space. You can put your privacy policy at the header space. You can put your resources or many, some other things like that on the header space you can put that on your footer, you get it? So it can also contain basic contact information, which is crucial for your business success. So it can also include your social bar, that is your social icons that can lead people to your pages on social media platforms. It also contains your copyright information. You want to ensure you have that right, the right copyright information on your website to prevent uh, stories that touches the heart. If you don't have the copyright information and people start copying your content, using it on their platform, you don't have any reason to sue them. You can't sue them to court because no copyright on your content. Okay? Oh, wow. Okay, I want to show us the sample of a footer. But it's like I have, I did not include it on this. Oh, sorry about that. All right, let me show us a sample of a footer using our website. I'd not include the footer on the slide. Okay, so I will go to our website and I will scroll down to the lowest mm -hmm. part. Somebody wants to speak? You'll be allowed to speak at the end of the class, please. Sorry. Okay, so this is the footer aspect. You can see contact after school academy. You can see information about where you can contact or how you can reach out to us. Then you can see the social icons. You can see some quick links about us, the academy, the blog, privacy policy, terms and condition, some other links that are available for you. Then you can see the copyright information, 2023 after school academy, all rights reserved. As simple as that statement is, that three words can be the reason why you will win a case in court. <laughs> but let's leave those aspects, but they are very important statements. All rights must be reserved to after school academy. So if you come to our website now and you, you steal one of our contents and you turn into your own content, if we catch you, eh, we will sue you <laughs> because all our contents are rights reserved and they are not for public usage. All right, so that's about your website pages. Any question before I proceed? Any question? So this is just the summary of the web part of the website, the header, the main content, and the footer. So some websites do have sidebars. Sidebars are just to show some other contents that are available on the website. You will get to know that more as we progress. So let me take our questions before I move on. Any question? Let's check the Facebook platform also if we have any question. If you don't have any question, let me know if you are enjoying the class. Okay, so no question from Facebook. Question from Zoom, any question? So are you enjoying the class? Feedback, please. Are you enjoying the class? Should I proceed? Am I the only one here? All right, I'm waiting for a feedback. As soon as I get, as I get at least one feedback, I'm proceeding with the class. Oh, 
Okay, I can proceed. I'm enjoying it. All right, beautiful. So now we can move on. So let's go to the common types of website layouts. Okay, gradually you are getting to an aspect where you are going to, to take your assignment for today. Okay, so we have different, kind, different types of website layouts. What we call layout is just how your websites are organized, the, the images, the text, all the website elements. Website elements are basically grouped into three. You have your text, your buttons, and your visuals. Your visuals can be, can be images or videos or slideshows. So those are visuals. Then you have your text and your buttons. Those three elements makes up a web page. Okay. So now how do you lay out those elements? How do you organize them? How do you structure them? That's what we call website layouts. So you can have single columns, split screen, asymmetrical layout, grid of cards, magazine layout, boxes, fist sidebar, featured image. Now, I will not go deep into that because that's a lot on its own. So that would be our assignment for this particular class. So you are going to read a particular content on, 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 on the web page. Okay, will this web design class be free to the end? Yes, sir, it will be free to the end. <laughs> Someone is already scared, like, hey, all this content that is heavy, heavy that you are giving us, will you give us like this to the end for free? <laughs> so we give you this content to the end for free. You can trust us on that. We don't go, we don't, we don't, we don't go back on what we have said. So it will be free to the end. Thank you for that question. Okay. So you have your F-shape layout, your Z-shape layout, your curated visuals. These are different kinds of layouts you can use to build your website. And your assignment is to go to this particular web address, wix.com slash blog slash 2020 slash 02 slash website dash layout. <laughs> I, love, I love their website structure. Lots of pages for you to access. Okay, let's leave that for now. So this is just a web layout that you can click on. Okay, thank you, Aziz. We are grateful to have you also. Thank you. So I will drop the link directly to the chat section very soon, or maybe to our website, uh, to our group. Or when you have the slide, you can copy the link also. So this is, you will go to this link and on that link, you will read the content on that link and you will summarize it. Basically, the content on that link is to give you more understanding about website layouts. So one thing we don't like to do in After School Academy, in our courses, is that we don't like to teach what's already available on the internet. <laughs> so anything that's already available on the internet, we it's better we just link and give it to you as a resource, as, a, as part of the resources for the lesson and commit more time to teach what is now available on the internet. So that's why it doesn't make much sense if I put more time to be teaching you about website layouts. Some people have already done justice to that and they did a great job in that context. So go for it and check it out. So let me show you some web design tips as we round up in this theoretical class for today. Web design tips. Number one, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Simplicity is very important. I've said it at the beginning, less is more. So keep your design simple. If you go to our web page or to our website or to any correct website, you will see the simplicity that was employed. Look at the slides we are sharing to you. Simple slides, not too busy. It makes your design to, to be professional and to be of high quality. And also it makes readability uh, it improves readability, okay? So keep it simple, be consistent, be consistent. Your colors, the colors for your buttons, the colors for your headings, the colors for your text, they should be consistent. The images you are using, the logo should be consistent. The footer should be consistent. The header should be consistent. All those things are very important. Your hero for different pages, consistency are very important. Then have a clear call to action. So your buttons should, let me give you, let me be, uh, let me be showing that, showing that to us visually using our web page so that you can understand what I'm talking about. 
So the first one I talk about is simplicity. You can see this uh, featured image. Simple, just the header, the test, the button, that's the call to action, very clear. Explore all program. So you already know what you will get when you click on this button. Then the images are there, well arranged, simple, you know. And you go through the whole website, you can see the simplicity at work. And you can see the consistency. All the buttons have the red color for the after school academy red color. All the buttons have that. All the tests have the same fonts. The, the headings have the same font, font size. The test has the same font size and the, the same font type. You can see the, the use of colors. You can see the buttons still the same color for all the buttons. You can see everything, consistency is there, simplicity is there. So it makes your work easier and easy for people to understand. So keep it simple, be consistent and you'll be able to get good design. So let's proceed. Uh, another thing is easy navigation. That's why you need your menu. So on your menu, people should be able to get to other pages on your website, easy navigation. Use keywords. So later we will talk more about keywords, then limit the number of clicks. You have to control the number of, especially for e-commerce websites. When people want to buy the product, don't let them click to different pages before they, before they later buy. So your process to buying should be simple. Limit the number of clicks. Include title and meta tags. We we'll talk more about this when we get to search engine optimization. So you include your title, you include your meta tags for all pages. Clear contact page, very important. People should be able to know how to access you, how to contact you. So if you go to our website, right from the header, you can see the contact, you can access the contact page. People want to be able to reach out to you. So you must have a clear contact page. You can see contact on the menu bar. In fact, I always encourage it. Let your contact button be available on the menu bar on your header. That's the menu, the navigation. So you can see this is the contact page. So for more information with our courses, get in touch with us. So this is the address, this is the email and the phone number, the opening hours, the map. So they can reach out to us. They can get direction through Google map. They can fill a form to reach out to us, send the form. And that's all. Clear contact page is very important. So those are part of your web design tips. Then less of stock images. So the images you are using add some originality to it to build, your, to build trust for your organization. But that doesn't mean you can use stock image. You can use stock images, especially at the beginning of your website. Probably the organization is still growing. You don't have much images. You can start with stock images, you get it? Then always fill in the alternate text and description for all images. This is to help your search engine optimization. So there is a way we upload images to websites. You will learn that when we get to the practical section. We fill what we call the alternate text and the description of all images. Then good use of contrast. Contrast is all about differentiation. So for instance, if you look at this slide now, the background is white, then the text we are placing on top are not white. If I put a white text on a white background, will it show? No, it will not. So that's what we call contrast. You use, uh, you ensure you create a level of differences to be able to help your content to be readable and for people to be able to navigate well on your website, okay? Good use of contract, then build for users and not you. Now, this is very important. When you are building your website, consider the users, not you. There are some things that you prefer as a designer, but based on your users, that might not be the best decision to make. So you build for users. For instance, probably your users are, are kids and kids like a lot of bright colors. So if you you are not someone that has interest in bright colors, probably you you are you are a cool you are a cool guy. So you like you like cool colors. You you don't you don't like anything shiny shiny shiny. Because the user are kids, you must build for them. <laughs> so you use bright colors. You forget about you 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 forget about the fact that you don't like bright colors. 
you use what the users like. Do you understand? There are some fonts that females like, all these script fonts, curly fonts, all those stylish, stylish fonts. So you, you use that for female designs, especially if you are building fashion, fashion uh, a website for a fashion business. Now, I don't like those kind of fonts as an individual, but when I'm building websites for fashion designers, I have to use them because that is what the users need. So you build for users and not for you. Setting up WordPress, wow. So that's the end of today's class. We are not going to set up WordPress today. <laughs> So, any question? Okay, let me leave this. Question and answer. Let's take our questions for the day. I've already given us the assignment for the day, what you are going to read and summarize. You will get the link better when you have the slide, which you, I will send it immediately after this class now. Get, go to the WhatsApp group. If you are not on the WhatsApp group, uh, quickly make sure you are indicate on the chat section so that we can add you. So on the WhatsApp group, I will send this slide immediately and you can you can see the assignment for the day. So questions and answers. Questions and answers from anybody. How do we install the WordPress application? All right, so how do we install WordPress? To install WordPress, you will be shown. In the, in, the, in the subsequent classes. So we are not yet at that aspect of the class. So thank you for that question. Of course, we will show you how to install WordPress. Okay, any other question? So with that, we've come to the end of the theoretical lessons in this course. Wow, hallelujah. Okay, as this, okay, you can, Go ahead with your question. If you want to speak, you can unmute yourself. Thank you. Okay, my question is, um, are we going to make it, make it of any other to aside on WordPress? All right. Okay. Yes, you will be in the process. We are going to make use of other tools. Like we will we make use of a design application like Canva, for instance, in order to do some editing. We will, for our images that will be uploading, then we also make use of tools like background remover in order to create some PNG images. Also, when we are doing, when we are having our, that will be the next class, we have a one day HTML course. So when we are having the HTML course, we are going to make use of a coding application, sorry, a code writer application. So we, we make use of, if you are using your laptop, you will make use of uh, VS Code. And if you are making use of your phone, you will make use of Reply or other app that we, I, will, I will show to us that you can use to write your code on your phone. So it's just, it's just going to be a one day code class, coding class, just to give us information about some terminologies we use in web design, like H1, like paragraph, like anchor tag, alternate tag, meta tag, EDA, all those things. You need coding knowledge to be able to understand those things very well because you will use them in WordPress also. So I think I've answered your question as is. So, but the major application is WordPress. Thank you for that. Any other question? Any other question? Gradually, we are coming to the end of today's class. We've spent one hour, 41 minutes. Sorry, we spent 41 minutes, 42. When did we start? We start 11. So we spent one hour, 42 minutes, sorry. Okay, another question. Please, can we get to this video after the class? Okay, yes. We will get to this video after the class. So it will be uploaded as soon as the editing is ready. So you should get it later in the afternoon, probably before the close of work today, the link to the video will be available. And you can also watch it immediately on Facebook because since it's been streamed to Facebook, I believe after two or three minutes after the class, the Facebook one should be ready. But if you want to get it on YouTube, then 
just give us some time till later in the day, you will get it. It will be available on YouTube. For the slide, the slide will be available immediately now. As soon as I close this class now, the slide will be available on our WhatsApp group. Okay, any other question? All right, so thank you very much. The next class will be coming up by 2 p.m. That is the next class for today is coming up by 2 p.m. And that will be for people who registered for the graphic design class. So the graphic design class is coming up by 2 p.m. If you know anybody that's registered for that aspect of the training or that enrolled for that, their class is coming up by 2 p.m. today. So thank you, Progress. Thank you, Aziz. Thank you, uh, Mr. Elijah. You are welcome. And Dejri has done, okay, maybe, and some other people that joined that I can see them now. And all our followers on Facebook, let me see if I can call out their names. Uh, basically, people that drop comments. I know some people are following, but they are silent followers. So I have Chutz Abramsi, you are welcome. Daniel Victor, you are welcome. Ashegun Oyehan, you are welcome. And there is one Chi. Let me see if I can still see the person. Okay, I can see the okay. Then A D A M S. Is it at arms? Okay. You are welcome. And one Chi Amaka or something like that. I can't get it now. So everybody, you are welcome. We, we are glad to, okay. Yes, we are we are glad to have you here. Do have a wonderful day. So we meet again on Wednesday. The next class, the next class for web design is Wednesday. So Wednesday by 11 a.m. we are meeting again. By Wednesday, we are meeting again by 11 a.m. So thank you very much. We Every other conversation will continue on our WhatsApp group. So thank you all and do have a wonderful day. I'm Ife Olua. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.